I'm in a place called Frenchman Coulee this weekend with friends to climb here. But I took a day off to film for you guys so I can show you these amazing canyons, these basalt rock formations and prairie down below. It's just a really cool place, very different from what I filmed at before. And I can't wait to show you some of the sites that I've discovered here. Hi everyone, this is Andrea with Adventures and Dreams. And I'm taking you to this great place that I've come to love for climbing but it's also amazing for day hikes. There are so many good locations to go to here, up on the plateau, but also down below in the valley. When the sun is shining, this place is bathed in golden light and it's gorgeous. And I hope to catch a sunny day this weekend to show you guys. But even on a cloudy day like today, it's wonderful and I'm enjoying my day hike while my friends are climbing. The first goal of today is to reach the Frenchman Coulee waterfall and I was going to take a shortcut but nope, nope, it's too dangerous. I saw no path, no way of getting down there so I gave up really quickly. I did discover this beautiful old car and wonder what its history is and I also saw the path that was going along the valley all the way to the waterfall that I'm going to take you guys to. But I really had no choice. I had to scramble back up to the road and walk on the road to the hiking path that makes it a lot easier to reach this waterfall. At least the marmots that I saw along the way made the path a little bit more entertaining as I walked along the street. These little guys were really not afraid of me and I could get pretty close to them. As I walked around the corner, I finally got to see the waterfall for the first time. And it's so impressive that I got my drone out immediately and filmed it across the way before the winds might pick up and I wouldn't be able to fly anymore. I finally reached the much easier hiking path that took me along the valley's side to reach the waterfall. When walking along the creek and looking down the valley, I couldn't help but think about the way this place was formed. Frenchman Coulee and the entire region have a breathtaking past. A coulee is a valley or a drainage zone. This name will make much more sense when I tell you about the history of this place. I've told of much younger volcanic events around the Pacific Northwest in previous videos but the story of Frenchman Coulee started between 30 and 10 million years ago. Lava piled up over this extended time frame, forming a dense layer up to 10,000 feet tall and covering an area of about 100,000 square miles in eastern parts of Washington, Oregon and Idaho. As the lava slowly cooled and crystallized, it formed hexagonal patterns of basalt joints the characteristic vertical columns we see everywhere in this region. The land also tilted over time and a thick layer of sud formed on top of it. About 100,000 years ago, glaciers moved south during the Ice Age, eventually damming and diverting the Columbia River and the Spokane River. Debris formed many lakes during this time. Lakes drained into one another increasing the glacial lake Missoula until it was as big as half of Lake Michigan. It covered an area of about 3,000 square miles. The ancient shoreline is still visible in Montana. When the ice started melting faster than the glacier could advance, it reached the lip of the ice dam and began to overflow. 
A deep channel in the ice released water in a roar, widening it rapidly. The ice dam may have been destroyed within a couple of days, releasing water at an unprecedented rate. It was calculated that the flow rate was about 10 times that of all the rivers in the world combined. It might have reached about 45 miles an hour. Imagine the impact such water flow had. Giant boulders and icebergs were moved along, chipping away rock as they collided, and ripples formed in the land, which are still visible today. Water rushed down the slope of the old lava field to sweep away the basalt columns that had formed underneath. Deep canyons were eroded into the basalt, some 200 feet deep. All the basalt along the water's destructive path washed away, leaving only a hard granite layer, the coulee floor. When the big glacial lake finally drained completely, it left the landscape as we see it today, with tall basalt cliffs along the sides of the coulees and flat canyon floors. This history really fascinates me, and if you would like to read it up on your own, I included the links in the description below. The second part of my day trip takes me to yet another waterfall, but this time on top of one. I normally only get to see this from far away when I climb with my friends on the other side of the valley, but today I wanted to take the opportunity to actually walk up to it and see what it's all about. After walking on top of the ancient lava field for a while, I finally get to see the valley below where the great floods happen. I can almost imagine the water rushing down this valley, washing away all the basalt columns to form this coulee down below. This location is so beautiful and I have to return for sure, 
perhaps with my backpack and my tent, to watch the sunrise and the sunset from up here, and perhaps to watch the climbers on the far side of the cliff while I have a quiet place to myself. The wind and rain kept me from flying my drone up here, but this hawk glided effortlessly in the currents of the wind, and it was so graceful to watch him fly up there. We all went climbing the next day, and I just want to take you along on this adventurous path to our climbing area. I didn't film it all while I was climbing there with my friends, but I do want to show you some photos from last time we were here because this place is so amazing for climbers and hikers alike. The next time I'm here I want to capture this golden light for sure and camp at the waterfall which you can see right there, we were just there yesterday. But the campsite we were staying at is pretty nice for hikers and for climbers and it's so close to the feathers that you could see on the far side there, which is just a smaller climbing area that you can reach within a few minutes from your camp. was pretty strong on most days, which is why I brought the Hilleberg Namarsh 2 GT again. I saw dust storms come through the campsites and almost destroying some of the tents here. But this tent, of course, it withstands anything that I put it through and it also didn't have any dust inside because it's completely enclosed. My no face tent with all mesh would not have been fun on this trip for sure. <laughs> <laughs> 
the wind was good for something and the tail actually stabilized the kite quite a bit and it was flying pretty well, almost. My adventure here at Frenchman Cooley is coming to an end and I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I really love this location so much and I already can't wait to return again. Don't forget to subscribe and like my video and I see you on my next adventure.